So, uh, uh, good morning or good afternoon in three minutes. Um, it's my pleasure to be here and to discuss uh, some new opportunities. Um, and uh, you are all aware, of course, of uh, the buzz made by uh, uh, some data uh, before and after reporting that uh, maybe vitamin C may be um, useful in treating patients with sepsis. But uh, we don't know so much what would be the mechanism. Uh, one of these, and this is what I would suggest to you, uh, could be the improvement of the microcirculation with uh, this kind of I mean, you are all We have seen these kind of images, and, and the real problem when we have these is to understand why and how we can manipulate the system. Um, we have a lot of data showing that indeed we have a uh, close um, alterations that are exactly the same in, in, in all these trials uh, with again this very important aspect of decrease in vascular density and no flow intermittent flow in some vessels with heterogeneity between the different vessels. And it is indeed associated with outcomes, severity is very important there. So the rationale for trying to modulate it is quite important there. So would vitamin C be the next potential therapy? Well, potential by definition, but uh, could it be useful or not? Well, we can look at the experimental literature, and um, this one, by the way, came for far before the actual bust in the ICU with the vitamin C. And in, in these trials in experimental conditions, it was quite interesting to realize that um, the um, uh, administration of um, um, vitamin C here as a pretreatment, and it's important again, it is a pretreatment. We have a lot of drugs that have been useful as a pretreatment, but nevertheless, as a pretreatment, um, Ascobat was indeed able to, um, um, to, to restore the microcirculation to a point that was very close to the normal one. Also, very interesting, um, vitamin C was totally without any effect in control conditions. So it is really uh, something that seems to be more useful in the condition of preventing the, the, the insult of sepsis much more than doing something as specifically to the microcirculation. More interestingly, perhaps, the therapy uh, induced after the insult. And so here, uh, again, the, um, uh, you can see that uh, in white we have the perfused vessels, in black we have the non-perfused vessels, the static one, as I mentioned. So uh, after injection, of course, of peritonitis in these animals, there was uh, a marked decrease in the perfused vessels, uh, and an increase, of course, in the non-perfused vessels. Um, and what occurred, and this is quite interesting, is that when they give ascorbide or vitamin C one hour after the insult, they observed a significant improvement in the microcirculation in these animals with an increase in the perfused vessels and a decrease in the non-perfused vessels. But when they delayed the therapy up to 24 hours after the insult, which is probably a uh, timing which is much more close to what we will have in the clinical um, pattern when indeed you know, we do not see really our patient just one hour after the initiation of the infection but much more uh, one at least one day if not two days after the insult we can see that indeed in these conditions the effect was still preserved and a very similar impact on perfused vessels as well as in non-perfused vessels. So it seems to be relatively um, interesting here. Of note, we can also look at the doses, which were quite uh, severe, uh, of course, in these, but uh, often in, in, in the rodents, we have to give quite large doses of, of medicines here. So it's difficult to translate to humans, of course. And um, in, in other uh, models, again, uh, it was shown again that uh, uh, ascorbate indeed uh, decreased the number of vessels that were stopped in another model of sepsis here, uh, showing again and again the same effect. So experimental data seems to be relatively um, going in the same direction. Do we have 
a little bit uh, uh, other data. Well, we have this kind of uh, uh, data showing again uh, here in uh, gastric mucosa, not uh, on the muscle, that indeed also um, ask about maybe um, in interesting in uh, try and improving um, the uh, microvascular perfusion um, here in um, hemorrhagic shock and, and reperfusion. And so uh, some effects here that was uh, perhaps independent of its antioxidant effect because indeed allopurinol was not able to have the same effect. So it seems to be more specific to something with uh, vitamin C than uh, uh, just a basic antioxidant uh, stuff. So what are exactly the mechanisms that can be involved um, with vitamin C that make perhaps that product quite interesting? Well, it seems to preserve the uh, antidotal cell integrity and compared to the uh, controls, you can see that injury here in uh, electron microscopy uh, alter quite a lot the endothelial uh, cell. Uh, we cannot even see the nice junction wave here that we totally disappeared. And by giving, as a, again, as a pretreatment, uh, the uh, uh, vitamin C, it was able to preserve uh, the endothelial cell uh, integrity uh, here. So it seems really to, to target the endothelium and not to be something um, on, 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 the, on the part of the system. An important aspect is probably that vitamin C may modulate uh, the nitric oxide synthase, and in particular the endothelial one. And so, um, indeed, uh, it has been shown that in a, in a dose dependent uh, factor, uh, there is indeed uh, some effect on the um, uh, endothelial nitric oxide synthase. And interestingly, it occurs relatively rapidly. So if you give the um, ascorbate here at the maximal dose, you can see that initially for a couple of hours there was a minimal effect, but the maximum effect was seen 12 to 14, uh, 20 hours after the administration of uh, the um, vitamin C. So we still need to combine this with the previous experiment showing already some effect one hour after. So maybe it is not the major factor, but at least it seems to play a role and especially probably the continuation of the effect on the microcirculation. And indeed, why I, I, I mentioned it is probably very important because these trials were done um, using knockout mice. And using these knockout mice, there were knock mice that were knocked out for the uh, neuronal and inos. And you can see that the effect was still preserved of vitamin C in this condition when the uh, uh, inos and the inos was absent. So it was not dependent on that one. However, in mice that were knocked out for the enos, for the endothelial nitric oxide synthase, um, then indeed the effect was totally lost um, for vitamin C. So this means that we need to have the nitric oxide synthase, the endothelial nitric oxide synthase that is functioning, to be indeed in position there to have some improvement in the microcirculation. So it seems that this mechanism is still uh, quite relevant there. Um, and another factor is that it may also um, not only directly affect the nitric oxide synthase, but also play with one of these its cofactors. And one of the very important cofactors of the uh, nitric oxide synthase is the uh, BH4 or tetrahydrobiopterin. And interestingly, when you give um, 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 ascorbate, it is transformed into D deoxyhexorbate, but also, uh, on the other hand, the BH2, which is a uh, less use, um, less impacting the nitric oxide synthase, is transformed into its important cofactor, the BH4. So, um, indeed, it has been shown that uh, by giving ascorbate, it will increase also the BH4 levels, not immediately, but at least after a couple of hours, it will increase the BH4 levels. So probably, again, contributing somewhat to the effects of vitamin C. And remember that BH4 is a very, very important cofactor of um, the uh, nitric oxide synthase. And so remember that when the nitric oxide synthase is coupled to by the presence of BH4, then in these con con conditions, the arginine in presence of oxygen is transformed into citrulline and nitric oxide, which has, of course, the beneficial effects on the microcirculation. 
On the other hand, when BH4 is lacking, then in these conditions, even though we have plenty of oxygen, even though we have arginine, this synthase cannot produce the nitric oxide, but on the other hand, will produce radical oxygen species, and in particular, peroxide nitrate. And in these conditions, this will not only uh, lack the beneficial effect of nitric oxide, but also produce uh, substances that are very toxic for the endothelium and the surrounding cells. We have shown that administration of BH4 is improving also the microcirculation. This, this were um, study in sheep in large animals, and we can see that indeed the administration of um, tetrahydrobiopterin improved the microcirculation in these animals. And more importantly also, it blunted the increase in the heterogeneity that was observed in control animals that was not observed in the septic animals. And this was associated uh, with uh, an improved uh, outcome, but also improved uh, organ function and improved endothelial function because there was a limited um, permeability, in, in increasing permeability in the treated animals. So it seems to be indeed targeting the microcirculation that can be useful in these conditions. Um, some other trials have found later on that indeed uh, BH4 can be useful in this condition to improve the microcirculation. And we have also shown that it will also be useful in ischemia or perfusion injury, trying to prevent indeed somewhat these alterations here given as a pretreatment in Arctic cross clamping um, in animals. And you can see that indeed the administration of BH4 uh, improved the microcirculation but also uh, blunted the increase in creatinine. Uh, um, in creating a rise uh, after uh, aortic uh, cross clamping in these animals. So this seems to be really some things that can help in, in, in these factors. So what could be the other factors of, um, of uh, vitamin C, and especially on the vascular permeability? Well, in, in that trial uh, in which uh, Paul Marek was implicated, uh, it's, but, so it was not only the administration of vitamin C, but combined with um, hydrocortisone and um, um, in these animals, you can see that indeed um, the vitamin C um, uh, combined with the other, the hydrocortisone was able uh, to decrease the, um, uh, or to prevent the alterations in endothelial permeability that was um, uh, induced by uh, endotoxin in this, um, in this model. Also, um, after cycle ligation, um, the uh, ascorbate may also, as you can see here, uh, protect, uh, we can already see visually uh, that it improves the microcirculation compared to a CLP where you have indeed uh, less vessels, but also you can see uh, the leakage here around these vessels, uh, this blurry uh, black aspect here, which is prevented here uh, with, um, um, with uh, vitamin C, and you can see in numbers that indeed uh, uh, the vitamin C prevented uh, the vascular leakage in that uh, trial. However, some other trials have not exactly found the same. This one found also the same with a similar improvement in the um, vascular uh, leakage here with ascorbat uh, compared to the uh, viaco. Uh, and you can see that indeed uh, this model of, uh, of sepsis by using, by giving uh, uh, interferon and uh, sepsis. But on some others, I have not found exactly the same. And in this recent um, um, trial published in the ICM experimental, you can see that indeed there was no impact of uh, ascorbat in the um, on blood pressure, whatever the way uh, it was given as a bolus or as a bolus plus and continuous infusion in these conditions. But also, the plasma volume seems to be exactly identical um, in sham animals, uh, so just septic animals, and in uh, animals receiving uh, endotoxin as a bolus or bolus plus infusion. However, so there's still something quite intriguing here because in that same trial, they also showed that the administration of um, uh, vitamin C was somewhat able to improve the urine output um, in these animals, but only one group, which was a group of the bolus, not a group of the, uh, um, and less, let's say, in the bolus, bolus plus continuous infusion. But nevertheless, there was some improvement in urine output there. So was it because they were still preserving somewhat the other function or by another mechanism. We do not know exactly, and this perhaps deserves more uh, investigation. 
Could there be some other potential mechanism than just the underdog function itself? Well, maybe yes. I mean, um, uh, there could be some um, uh, pro or anti inflammatory effects, as you can see here, and also some uh, modulation of the coagulation aspect as a blunting of the increase in thrombomodulin in these conditions. And also, a very interesting uh, focus of interest can be the prevention or limitation of the formation of the trap. And you can see that indeed in uh, septic conditions, there is formation of this trap. These traps are usually useful to trap also bacteria, but um, also impair the microcirculation in some uh, aspects. And interestingly, administration of vitamin C is able to limit or to prevent these without increasing uh, the uh, proliferation of bacteria uh, in the organs. So it seems to be really something interesting in these conditions. So in conditions, we know that indeed the microcirculation is quite relevant uh, to our patient in sepsis and, and, and can relate to organ dysfunction. Um, vitamin C in, seems to improve in experimental conditions uh, the microvascular perfusion. Um, we do not have uh, up to know uh, sufficient data in humans to really say that it's also observed in human conditions. We are uh, designing these kind of trials, but these are not yet done now. And these defects uh, may be related to several factors, including modulation of endothelial nitric oxide synthase, but also just basically by improving the endothelial cell function. And with this, I thank you for your attention. <laughs>